Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Isle of Sky, which is a brand new tile laying game all about building up your territory to score points. And boy, Jen and I have instantly fallen in love with this thing. I'm going to do a run through today so you can see what it's all about. Now while the game plays up to five players, today we are only going to be playing a two player game. Here I am over here, the green player. I am from Clan McKinnon. And Jen is over there, the blue player, Clan McDonald. Everybody gets their own little player shield, and man, the game just could not be simpler. Now, as part of setup, we've got the scoreboard here, and we have chosen randomly four objective tiles that you know give us goals. There is actually, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16. 16 different objective tiles. And every time you play, you're going to get four of them chosen randomly. In this game, we get points for two points for every completed mountain range, no matter what the size. So we want to close off mountain range as fast as possible. Five points for having the most boats, two points for having the second most. Two points per tile of our biggest lake. So having a little small lakes isn't going to be great. We want to build up a really big super lake so we can score a lot of points out of it. And one point for every road that connects back to our starting castle. So these are the ones that we're getting in this game. And now the interesting thing is each one of these is going to score three times over the course of the game. Here we are in round one. And in round one, you see the A here, we're going to score the mountain thing. In round two, we're going to score the boats. In round three, we're going to score the mountains again and the lakes. In round four, it'll be the boats and the roads. And then in round five, it'll be the mountains for the last time, the lake and the roads. And then finally, the boats, the lake and the roads. So, you know, the, you know this, you can see what's coming. And this creates a constantly shifting set of focuses for us as we're always trying to make sure at the end of every round, over these six rounds, we are in a best position to really capitalize. So, Right off the bat, uh, first thing that happens every round is we get income. And in fact, actually, everybody's player shield has a nice little summary on the back. First in a round, we get income. Then everybody gets three tiles, and we have to set prices for them. Then, um, and we do that in secret. Everybody is going to destroy one of the three tiles they get. We have this little axe, and we set prices on the other two. Then everybody has a chance to buy tiles from everybody else based on what prices we set. Then finally, the tiles we, we did end up getting, we end up applying to our territory. And the last thing we do in a round is we score based on whatever round it is. So let's start doing that. First thing we do is income. At the beginning of the game, we each have an income of five bucks because our castle makes five bucks for us. And that might expand over the course of the game. But anyway, here's my one, two, three, four, five bucks. And Jen, she gets one, two, three, four, five. Let's put that over there by her player shield. Okay, so we've done our income. Now everybody dips into the big old bag of tiles, so many tiles, and pulls out three randomly. Let's go ahead and grab some for both of us. One, two, three. Three for me, one, two, three for Jen. And now we put these on display in front of our player shield. So I got a road with three sheep, a mountain with, uh, these are these ancient prehistoric towers that can only be found in Scotland. No, they're nowhere else in the world. I can call uh, uh brocks or something like that. So there's a brock and there's a little enclosed mountain. Now this is actually a really good tile because remember, we score two points for every completely enclosed mountain. So right off the bat, this tile is worth six points because we're going to score this mountain thing three times. So this is a very valuable tile. And let's see, and then we have another mountain range with a whiskey barrel. This is how we can increase our income. If we get these tiles where we have, you know, whiskey generation, and we get those to connect back along a road to our castle, it increases our, our income at the beginning of every round. So those are the three I got. Jen got a whiskey barrel with a farmhouse and a lighthouse, and uh, uh, one of those uh, brocks with a bridge, and two sailboats. Which remember, oh, we care about sailboats as well. So that's a very valuable thing because that's a three-point spread on whoever comes in first and second. If one of us, oops, and I actually, I, oh, no, that's Jen's. Right, so, so this is actually really valuable. Not right now, but remember, in the second round, whoever has the most boats gets five points. And maybe these are going to be the only boats that come out. So this, I mean, and if, and if Jen gets boats and I don't, she'll get five points and I'll get nothing. So that's a five-point spread. So that's a really valuable tile too. 
And why am I talking about their value? Because right now they have none. Now, in secret, Jen and I are going to set prices on these things. Uh, remember, one of the three tiles I've got, I'm going to axe. I'm going to destroy. It's going to be removed from the game. And then the other two, I am going to set the price that I am willing to pay to get that tile. And the thing is, after I've set the price, if Jen decides that she would happily pay that price too, she will pay that price to me. And then I will get some more cash. So, let's see. Now, like I said, uh, this one is very valuable. That's six points sitting right there. So I don't think I want to trash that one. And I would like to get some income. So I'm just going to go ahead and trash this field of sheep. And, you know, because the sheep right now are not worth much. We know, I mean, some of these objective things could have been sheep related, but they weren't. Now, in this bag, there are tiles that create extra scoring opportunities. So, you know, if, depending on if these come out, sheep might become valuable later in the game, but right now they're not. So I'm just going to trash that. I really want to get that. That's six points, that tile, all by itself, because of the closed mountain range. How much do I want to pay for six points? Well, you can see right here, at the end of the game, for money you have left over, it's five bucks for one point. So, money is not worth very much at all. So, what the heck, I think I'll pay three to get this, because it's pretty much a guaranteed six points. And then I've got two bucks. So, I could, I could pay, and then that would be, I'd be broke. Now, here's the thing. I'm the first player. Once I've set my prices and Jen has set her prices, we will reveal what we've set. And since I'm the first player, I'll be the first. I'll have the first chance to take any money I have left over in my hand and buy one of Jen's tiles from out from underneath her. But if I don't have any money left over, I won't have a chance to buy one of Jen's tiles. So maybe I take a buck off of each of these and I say, hey, you know what? I'll value that for two bucks. I'll value this for one buck. And that leaves me with a little bit of spending money so I could maybe buy one of Jen's tiles. Okay, so let's go with that. Man, I really hate to, you know, so I could go with this. But then with one buck, I might get something if Jen sets one of her tiles at a value of one. Okay, we'll go with that. I really want to hold on to this mountain. Ah, oh, but see, I really, if I get this, it increases my income for the rest of the game. This is five bucks I get. So it's certainly worth two bucks now to get five bucks over the course of the game, right? Ah, that's right off the bat. This is the hard thing because I want to price them as expensive as possible because then if Jen b does buy them out for me, hey, at least I get a big influx of cash. <sighs> but if I don't set some money aside, I won't be able to buy any of her stuff. And ideally, I want to pick up three tiles this round by buying one of hers and two of my own. What the heck? Okay, so I'm going to go with that. It's, I'm maybe undervaluing these things. We'll see how it goes. I'm saving two bucks for myself. Now, Jen, while I've been talking about this, Jen, everybody does this simultaneously. She's been going through the same process. And I think she would probably set that there. And what else is she going to do? She will set um, that there and that there. Okay, so Jen has made her decisions. I've made my decisions. Now, uh, the point no return has been reached. Everybody reveals. Blip, blah. Okay, right off the bat, my, this field of sheep has been axed, as has this old bridge. And these tiles, they go back in the sack, Jack. All right, there we go. Now begins the buying. I've got two bucks left over. I can see Jen valued this sailboat, this double sailboat tile, at three bucks. I can't afford it. Jen has priced me out it. Clearly, she wants that for herself because she knows next round it's going to be worth a lot of points. Pa getting three, paying three bucks to get three or maybe even five points, that is a worthwhile investment. If I could afford it, I'd buy it out from under her, but I only have two. But Jen said this, this little, uh, th this thing on the side of the road at only two bucks. I saved myself two bucks. I can afford that. But here's the thing. If I buy, now I know Jen started with five bucks, so I know she doesn't have any money left over. And um, I don't think, I don't recall there being, she was second player. She doesn't get extra money at the beginning of the game, does she? No, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure she doesn't. Nah, if I'm wrong about that, Paul, anyway. So I know she started with five bucks. So she has no money. She's put all her money on the table. So she can't buy either of these out from underneath me. I've got these locked in at a good price. I only had to pay three bucks to get these. But here's the deal. If I give Jen two bucks to buy this tile out from underneath her, then she's got my two bucks plus these two bucks. She suddenly has four bucks in hand. And with four bucks, she'd be able to buy this super important tile out from under me. So while I could afford it and I would like to buy this, if Jen had set a price of one on it, I'd probably go ahead and buy it, maybe, but I don't want to pay two, well, if I pay two bucks for this, it is increasing my income for the rest of the game, but then Jen will just, she'll definitely, she'll have four bucks on hand and she'll get that right out from underneath me. And I think so instead, I'm not. I'm going to hold on to my money. So, um, I had an opportunity, I was first up, I could have bought one of Jen's things. 
I passed. You either buy one tile or you pass. I passed. Now it's Jen's turn. She has the opportunity to give me one buck or two bucks to buy these. Unfortunately, Jen has no money on cash. She bankrupted herself, so she's going to pass as well. So this round, everybody got their own tiles. And so I had to pay three bucks and Jen paid five bucks. So we'll see who did better. Now, uh, once everybody gets the tiles they're getting, and I, and I held on to two bucks. So I'm going into next round a little bit richer than Jen, which I am happy about. All right, so, so save that two bucks. Jen has no money. And let's have Jen go on ahead and install her stuff. Now, this is follows pretty standard tile length stuff. You know, here's her starting tile, the castle, which has water mountains and plains on all sides. Those are the three types of environment. So if Jen wants to put this ocean down, she can put it down like this, and then boom, hey. But she would not be able to do that. Uh, she could do that. She can't do that. So you have to match stuff. Now, an interesting, one interesting thing about this Actually, well, okay, so Jen's got this three-way road, so the one thing you don't have to match is you don't have to match roads. But as it happens, Jen doesn't have that problem. So how is Jen going to lay this out? I think, oh yeah, this is an example. So there's a road heading up into the mountains. Jen is going to put this mountain right here, and, you know, and that means she's closed this off. There's no, the road just stops, and that's totally legal as long as the law, and the reason she's thinking about doing that is because remember, on this round, we're going to get two points for every complete mountain range we've made. So if Jen does that, she's just made a mountain range. Um, let's see, or no, instead of doing that, let's see, what else could Jen do? She could put this here, like, like she really should with water, and then, you know, she could go like this, but now she's, she wants, in this game, because of this, we want to make lots of tiny mountain ranges. This is building up a big mountain range. Let's say Jen's going to go like this. So she's closed off a mountain range, and um, this road, which has this whiskey barrel, connects back. So her next round, instead of making five bucks, she's going to make six, because they can get the whiskey back to the castle. So Jen's totally going to do that, because she's also closed off a mountain. Now, that's the only mountain she can close off. So this other one, she will just go on ahead, because remember... Uh, later on, we're going to start scoring points for our biggest lakes. So by doing something like this, Jen is starting to make a really big lake, which could be worth a lot of points for her later. So that is the beginning of Jen's territory. Now, I've got to do the same thing for mine. And remember, I get two bucks because I've got this closed off mountain already. And man, I wish if I could have gotten this in this, I would have two closed off mountains, but I didn't. So let's see, I've got a road. I probably want to connect it back. So this is legal. The mountain lines up, and I'm, so I'm going to increase my income as well. And how will I put this out? I'll just go ahead and put this here, let's say. Or, let's see. Well, now this is an interesting thing. I've got an option here. Remember, uh, later on in round three is going to be the first time when we're going to score for having a completely enclosed lake. If I just put this here like this or like this, I have made a completely enclosed lake, which means I'll score four points for that when we get to round three. And this lake could score me um, four, six, 12 points because it because I'm going to enclose lakes three times. Now that's me just going for a really quick closed lake, whereas Jen is obviously starting to try and build a really big lake. And if she can get this lake closed off by round three, she'll potentially make a lot more points than me. But I'm just going to go for the quickie, short, closed lake. So there we go. So we have each built our, um, our environments, and now at the end of the round, we score. And in round, we score number A, which is number of mountains, and both Jen and I have one enclosed mountain. Uh, and you know, even though Jen's is two tiles big and mine's only one, it doesn't matter the size, every completely enclosed mountain is two points. So you want to make them small. So we each scored two. We're tied up. That was it. That was the first round. Easy peasy. This game is remarkably quick, remarkably, uh, what do you call it? elegant and a huge amount of fun and we have just barely scratched the surface now moving on into round two well the first thing that's going to happen is we get our income each of us get six bucks now because we both install we both put whiskey on roads so here's jen's six bucks oops yeah here's jen's six bucks that she's going to take and i also get six bucks but i've still got two bucks from last time so i've really got eight bucks so i'm doing a little bit better than jen just a little bit Although remember, money isn't good for much at the end of the game, five to one. So you want to use that money if you can. So we've got our income and now we are going to get some new tiles. So let's go on ahead and see what new tiles come out. There's three for each of us. Uh, let's see, here's one, two, three for me. Here's one, two, three for Jen. Now let's see what they are. Ooh, a late, oh, see now, remember this is interesting. Jen, this, on the end of this round, Okay, no, this is the round where we're going to score sailboats. Currently, Jen's got two sailboats. I've got none. 
but, and ooh, no, oh, oh, this is interesting. So at the end of this round, whoever has the most scale boats gets five points, whoever gets the next most gets two. This tile came out with two sailboats on it. If Jen wants to, because remember, Jen's got an axe, she could axe this tile, which means guaranteed she will score five points and I won't get any. Or instead, she can set a high price on this tile because she knows, oh, by the way, in the second round, Jen is the first player, so she'll buy from me first. So Jen could set a high price on this knowing that I would probably be willing to pay it because you know, which would give her a huge influx of cash, and, um, and then we'd be tied, so she'd be giving up five points to get a huge influx of cash. So we'll have to see what she does. What else came out though? So she could ax this, or she could set a really high price on it to really gouge me for it. And let's see, there's some sheep, cattle, and house on this, otherwise that's not unremarkable. There's some more whiskey barrels, so this can increase income, and there's some cattle and lighthouses. And now so far, we haven't seen any extra tiles that, some of these tiles say, hey, for every cattle you've got, get a point. For every two whiskey barrels you've got, get a point. None of them have come out yet, so all these other icons don't mean anything. Right now, the only way to score points is off of these. And it's all about boats, and then in round three, it's going to be about closed up mountains and lakes. So Jen's got this round and next round to get this lake closed. And maybe I'm going to regret having gone for such a little tiny lake when I could have built up to something bigger. Uh, but we also still want to be closing off mountains. If I get this tile and put it off, boom, I've got my second closed mountain, which is another two points, which is going to score twice over the course of the game. Jen could also close off this mountain here, so she has to. But, like I said, we've just scratched the surface. We need to start noodling over what we want to, how much we want to pay for these, and also how much we are, how much, which one we're going to trash. And if you'd like to watch that, if you'd like to watch a few more rounds of this game, you can hit the little I up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, or alternatively, go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.